Welcome to BPM's IPO Readiness Roadmap, a series of conversations with our leaders who have been there and done that when it comes to leading companies to go public or determine whether another option may be the best fit for them. I'm John Weems, Head of Business Development at BPM, a top 50 U.S. accounting and advisory firm. Today, we are focused on technology opportunities that will increase enterprise value and help you gain access to real-time financial information to run your business. Our expert today is Brian Rohde leader of BPM's Technology Solutions Group. Brian has worked with numerous IPO track companies, and we'll get to all that in just a minute. And uh, though Brian won't brag about himself, his life includes a stint as a bit of a badass competitive mountain bike racer. And Brian, I wondered if as we get rolling here, if you could just tell us a little bit about that experience and how that has prepared you to move quickly with business leaders. Nice. I, I like the uh, the badass reference to uh, Johnny Lawrence from Cobra Kai. Quite relevant. Um, yeah, I wouldn't say my, my mountain biking skills were, were badass, but it was definitely uh, something quite enjoyable to do when the kids were young. Uh, I had a great time doing it. Definitely don't have the time now to uh, spend uh, training and, and racing with the kids older, but it's definitely uh, something fun that I can share uh, with them uh, nowadays. It's great. You know, when you start out at a mountain bike race, typically the prologue, the beginning, is, is, is all uphill to, to try and lengthen the, the, the field a little bit. To, to separate the, the high performers from, from the laggards a little bit. And that's very similar to, to how it is early stage companies, right? It's, it's an uphill battle. You're trying to separate yourself from the competition um, and, and really rise to the top. And then as you, as you peak at, at the beginning of that race, then you duck into the single track and hit some gnarly descents. And that's what it's like getting ready for IPO. Uh, it's, it's time to buckle up. You use all the skills that you've you've acquired up to this point, and uh, and enjoy the ride as you as you near that point. So, Brian, you, I know you have uh, navigated those twists and turns uh, with clients ranging from the angel stages through the public markets. Um, many executives watching this uh, may be focused on their next capital raise. Um, you know, sometimes they aren't always considered the sexiest. Why should accounting systems be a priority for them? Yeah, good question. I think if, if a company is, is considering IPO, they've obviously done something right um, to this point. They they've, have a very successful service or product, and then they're looking to capitalize on the value that they generated so far. So um, congratulations to them um, up to this point. When you speak about you know, why, why systems is a consideration when they're, when they're considering IPO or just additional rounds of funding, um, you know, there are some things that you need to think about uh, communicating the results of the company back to prospective investments or the public markets. Right? One of those things is, is uh, establishing predictability and stability with your company. Um, and also being able to demonstrate um, a run rate of growth. You know, you've done great to this point, but how can you demonstrate and report back to uh, that this has legs? When you get to that level of sophistication with reporting and the time of which you need to report back to the market on those things, uh, you can't do that on QuickBooks and spreadsheets alone. You need a sophisticated system uh, like NetSuite that, that's built for this that can produce those results in real time because as, as you get more sophisticated towards IPO, you're gonna to need to report on that um, quickly and accurately. So let's, let's move from the abstract to specific a little bit. And certainly we protect the confidentiality of our clients, but on a no names basis, can you give us an example uh, or two? Yeah, absolutely. There, there's one really cool client that we worked with, a uh, consumer products client that had multiple patents on one of its devices for air purification. Um, they were struggling to keep up with the increased demand of, of their product. And, and in addition to keeping up with the increased demand, they were trying to launch uh, version two, the next generation of their product. So we were working with them to help transform their business and move them from QuickBooks and spreadsheets to NetSuite to keep up with the, with the increased demand. Most of their sales were D2C through their, their e-commerce platform. Um, so through the course of implementing NetSuite, um, we're able to, to refine process and, and bring them in line with best practice to keep up with, with their increased growth. Uh, and then shortly after uh, we launched live on NetSuite, they were able to successfully launch version two of their product, which exceeded sales expectations. And a few months after that, they were able to achieve an additional 60 million in funding. So just quite the success story of what, what it can, a system implementation along with business transformation can do for a high growth company. Maybe, Brian, uh, another example, we have the, the consumer example, uh, maybe another in the business realm. Yeah, the, there, there's a, another company that we work with um, who was a publicly traded company, but uh, through the course of their audit, um, the auditors called out a material weakness 
with uh, operating their business on QuickBooks. So uh, quickly through the conversation, talked to the CFO and explained the benefits. And actually, the 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 auditors recommended NetSuite as the right solution to migrate from off of QuickBooks. So we worked with them to implement NetSuite in a in a timely fashion, so we could remove that material weakness. You know, most of us are conditioned through our iPhones and other things to you know plug and play. We take it out of the box. We use it. Aren't systems like NetSuite designed to be plug and play? They're, they're trying to get there uh, through Suite Success and, and other bundles of of the software. It's a step in the right direction, right? Because there there is a lot that that can be done in in a, in a bundled or, or off the shelf fashion but but no two implementations are the same no two clients are the same no two business challenges are the same so while some of the configuration settings of a project can be largely handled through a, a, a bundle or a suite success approach the magic really happens with the consulting and that's really where our team shines we consider ourselves consultants not just implementers of the software uh, the configuration settings is the easy part about the project um, it's it's the consulting. It's helping refine process, transform the business, change management throughout the course of that engagement to bring the business and the folks along the way. That's really where the magic happens. So while there is some element of um, off the shelf through suite success, that, that that's a NetSuite term, um, the the real magic happens with the consulting that comes with the team that that does your implementation. I'm right. Can you you comment a little? Um... I'm certainly we work at BPM. This is is uh, you know something we're aware of. Working with a firm that offers a broad array of services, can you you comment uh, kind of on the, the holistic approach? You know, certainly you mentioned that you're more than implementers, but uh, you know what what does a firm like BPM bring to the table? Looking back at that that previous example of the consumer products client, um, we were able to bring in technical accounting experts to help refine uh, the revenue model to bring it in line with ASC 606, which is the new revenue standard. Uh, so we were able to bring in all aspects of the firm, uh, which sometimes the skill sets felt outside of the NetSuite realm. Uh, so we work and, and leverage those skill sets across the firm to bring on every single NetSuite project, whether it's technical accounting, whether it's compliance and controls, uh, SOX compliance for public companies. We bring all of those skill sets to bear on every single project. And, and you don't get that by just going to a consulting firm. You get that by uh, working with a full service accounting firm that can handle all the needs. As we bring this this time to a close, can you comment a little on trends you're, you're seeing in the marketplace and technology implications? Some of our client strategies are shifting a little bit. We've, we've, we've worked with some clients that were looking to, and this would be pre-COVID, looking to expand uh, footprint and brick and mortar. Um, that has been put on pause and, and now they're doubling down on, on e-commerce. We've definitely seen a, an influx of opportunities um, with working with our clients that are trying to pivot more into e-commerce. So selling online is definitely a trend. What we're seeing too, just with everybody working from home, is that businesses are realizing that the, the benefit that this has for their employees and then also for productivity and to be able to offer their employees uh, flexibility where they can work um, is pro proving to be a huge benefit. And, and moving towards cloud applications is allowing that to happen more easily. There is definitely a shift to, to the cloud. We've seen more clients moving off on-prem to enable that, that transition. Excellent. Well, Brian, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, if they need uh, cycling advice uh, or uh, technology advice, we invite listeners to connect with you via LinkedIn or email. And uh, we uh, encourage all of you to subscribe to BPM's YouTube channel. Uh, stay tuned for upcoming episodes. And we are always happy to answer your questions along the way on the IPO readiness roadmap. Thank you.